Hello, learners. I was just testing my newest invention, the prefrontal cortex senator. Looks like it needs a few more minutes before it's ready, which is great because first I want you to imagine you're a lizard. You're out in the sun, darting your head back and forth, scanning the rocks for danger. Now imagine you have a test to take. It'd be pretty hard to focus when you're on high alert. Oh uh, yeah, it really is. Well, today we're gonna take on the challenge of helping our lizard brain calm down. Are you curious? Well, let's fire up our neurons and get ready to learn something new. My friend, Mrs. Jehelka, told me you already learned how you could use our hand to represent a model of our brain and communicate which section is in control. Like this. Can you make the model of your hand brain with me? Today, we're gonna focus on two parts of the brain, the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. Let's find them first. On our hand model, where's our prefrontal cortex? That's right, it's right here. And in our actual head, it's right here. You might have to move your head to point to your prefrontal cortex, but I don't. I like to call the prefrontal cortex the smart part. That's because it's the part of the brain that helps us make smart decisions. Like when I decided to chainsaw my way through a globe. That was fun and educational. Now where on our hand brain model is our amygdala? Oh yeah, it's right here. We need to flip open our prefrontal cortex to see it. And in our actual brain, we have to go way deep inside. The amygdala is where we feel our emotions. Some people call it the lizard brain. Hmm, lizard brain. Like the part of the brain telling us to stick out our tongues and eat bugs? Well, not really. Whew. It's nicknamed the lizard brain because it's the only part of the brain that lizards have. You see, lizards don't have a developed prefrontal cortex that allows us to think critically and make smart decisions. The lizard brain is focused on bodily functions like breathing, eating, responding to danger. It's a survival machine. That's why lizards are always on high alert, looking for predators or running for cover. Their amygdala is in full control. Now, sometimes that's good. The amygdala is amazingly helpful when there's real danger. It makes you run fast, fight back, or even freeze to protect yourself. But that's all it can do. And since its job is to respond to danger, it's always looking for danger. Imagine trying to read a book if you constantly thought a ninja was gonna pop out to attack you. You wouldn't be able to focus at all. We can't spend our time fighting imaginary ninjas. But that's just what lizards do. It must be pretty tiring. Well, imagine if you could ask a lizard what it's like to be constantly terrified, anxious, or overstimulated. Well, why imagine? Let's do it. Come on out here, Liz. Hiya, Dr. Nagler. Ah! This is my friend Liz, the lizard. Ah! Ah! Who said that? What was that? It's okay, Liz. It's just me. And I'm glad you can make it. I wanted to teach you something about our brains. That's great. I'd love to. Ah! Ah! Danger! You see, my friend Liz here only has a lizard brain. And since there's no prefrontal cortex to keep the amygdala regulated, Liz is always on high alert. Gee, I wonder what it would look like if I was on high alert. You want to try it with me? Whoa, it's really hard to concentrate when you're doing that. You can say that again. See, your amygdala doesn't think, it just reacts. And most times, it overreacts. That's right, and it's also really fast. Ah, attack! You see, before your prefrontal cortex can even respond, your amygdala will send out the signal shouting, alert, alert! But if we wait a second, our prefrontal cortex can catch up and think, hey, that's not danger, that's just the machine letting us know our helmet is ready and it can let your amygdala know to calm down. Now I'm gonna help my friend Liz here 
by giving them a very special prefrontal cortex innator helmet. And let me turn it on. Oh my goodness. Why, that's absolutely splendid. Well, how do you feel, Liz? Well, suddenly I'm able to settle down. I feel calm and happy and focused. That's because of this prefrontal cortex. It helps keep your amygdala regulated. Regulate means to control a process to make sure it runs properly. In this case, it means your prefrontal cortex is making sure your amygdala is under control. It's kind of like controlling one of these dials. If we go too high, we just turn it back down, making you calm, happy, and focused. Simply wonderful. Your prefrontal cortex is a big help in keeping you focused. Why, Dr. Nagler, where's your prefrontal cortexinator? Well, me and my learner friends, we don't need a fancy contraption. We already have a prefrontal cortex right inside our head. And because of that, we can stay in control. If we're feeling too excited or too sad or too silly or too frustrated, we can activate our prefrontal cortex and let it know that it's time to regulate. Then we can calm down and refocus. That seems like a great skill to have. And a great skill to practice. But before we can practice these skills, it's important to recognize when we need to get focused and regulated. And to do that, we're going to visit my friend Ms. Rodriguez to help us identify how we're feeling. Now, if you like learning about your extraordinary brain, check out some of the other videos to keep exploring. And be sure to join Ms. Rodriguez as she shows us how to identify when we're feeling out of control. Oh, and congratulations, you just got smarter.